Hi, I'm Tom Linsky. Two years ago to this date, we released our most popular video yet. The real-time sinking of the Titanic. You've all seen it. Everyone's seen it. Like 30 million people have seen it. A lot of people have seen it, so you know what I'm talking about. It's been shown all over the place. We've seen it shown in museums with real-time commentary by historians. It's been shown in schools and we've licensed it out to documentaries. And it's also spawned about a million comments about conspiracies and people asking how we filmed it when there weren't colored cameras back then. That animation's come a long way since then. We've been working on it in the background while we work on building the ship and the rest of the game. So we touch on this every once in a while because it actually is a pretty important asset to the project. I want to walk you guys through some of the changes we've made. I thought they'd be pretty cool and I think you guys would want to hear them. Funny enough, that animation, which has gone viral, is actually a little embarrassing for us because we rushed it. We rushed it so much. Originally, it was just a pre-visualization like of physics and animation test for the game so we could get an idea of how the ship will behave and, and how to actually input it into the program. Well, every year we try to commemorate the, uh, the anniversary of the sinking. We were all sitting around on Skype and the question came up of, what are we going to do this year? I know we've all thought this at different times, but I, I said, why don't we do a real-time sinking? Up until then, we just kind of did slideshows and maybe like a picture of the sinking and we would talk about it. But why don't we actually do an animation of the sinking? And everyone else was just like, yeah, all right, yeah, I, I know, all right. I, I could tell that they all had thought of it too because of their reaction. And then we realized the anniversary was eight days away. So we had to really cram into this. So we took the pre-visualization animation which was very rough, and we had to clean it up for actual presentability. Our ship model, even the exterior, was completely far from done. It was so far from done, it wasn't even presentable. So Kyle, he took his old model, which he built for a mod, and it was low detail, it was low quality, and it has a bunch of inaccuracies, but it was a well-built model for the time, and uh, it was the perfect stand-in. So we stuck that in, and we had a few Skype calls with our consultants. We got Park Stevenson on the phone, and we talked a little bit with Ken and Bill. Over the course of those eight days, we just went back and forth, and we wrote up this outline of the text that we wanted to put in. We wanted to do voices, but for two hours and 40 minutes, we didn't have nearly enough time for that. We, we slapped it together, staying up late or not sleeping at all, and then we posted it, I think, on the 14th. Matt and I were in New York, actually, for a presentation of a plaque for one of Titanic's victims. And it had been uploaded a few hours prior. And every once in a while, I just kept checking the stats on my phone. And uh, it would be 1,000 hits, and then 5,000 hits. And then I think we got home, and it was 15,000 hits, which was pretty crazy, because we weren't getting those views at the time. So we did the podcast that night, and we had 1,500 people tuning into the podcast, and news stories started picking it up. I think the first one was one of my local stations in Philadelphia. It was Fox 29. They did the first coverage of it, and they tweeted that people are listening to the Titanic sink in real time. They're listening to this podcast, and they're watching the animation in conjunction to the podcast. And um, that brought in a whole bunch of people onto that podcast. I'm sure a lot of you guys were there. We stayed up until like 4 a.m. like we do every anniversary, and then the next morning it has 150,000 views. And there's stories all over the place. We were on Yahoo homepage, I uh, did an interview with CNN, NBC, BBC, CBC, all, all the BCs were there. And um, NPR was also interviewing me, and it, it was a very exciting time. And I was, th that day, I was just painting a deck for a neighbor. And I was working with a paintbrush, and I kept getting all of these messages from news reporters asking, can you do an interview? And I actually did one of those interviews while painting the deck. So it was, it caught us completely off guard. And our plan was upload this rough video for the podcast and then delete it later. So, and, and, and then we would eventually do a better one. So now we can't delete it because of the, the view count. We tried doing ad share or, you know, YouTube's revenue source where you put an ad or two on the video and you make a lot of money if it's going viral. We put screams in at the sinking, of, or at the very last few minutes of the sinking because that's when it gets really horrifying and we didn't have any good scream sound effects that you could just have the whole time without getting annoying. So um, we stuck them in, in the last few minutes and those screams, they're royalty free. 
but some copywritten song also used the same royalty-free song uh, screams. So YouTube said that we infringed on the song and wouldn't give us any of the revenue. And uh, we had to argue it. And then they said, all right, fine, you're right, but you're not getting the revenue you lost. And we actually calculated it was something like ten or $11,000 of revenue we lost thanks to that. Actually, right after that, YouTube changed their policy on revenue sharing, where now, if there's a dispute, they still collect the money and they hold it until they decide who to award it to. I wouldn't be surprised if, if we were one of the catalysts for that policy change, because it happened like two days later. Anyway, what was a rush job was now becoming the center of attention among the Titanic community. So, naturally, it had critics. In fact, there's an entire website devoted to scrutinizing every second of the video, which is a little overkill. Although we do certainly appreciate everyone wanting to get it right. Um, we want this to be as accurate as possible. It's going to be the centerpiece of our game, really. That's why a lot of people are going to want to play the game. They're going to want to see the sinking. We, of course, have to get it right out of respect for what happened and, of course, for our own respect for the integrity of history. The animation, as it stands now, is just for our own internal use. It's still the full-time animation, everything is there from Iceberg to the ship's disappearance. We don't want to share it just yet, because it would spoil some of the fun in the reveal for the final game for you guys, and also there would be way too much imitation in competing Titanic projects, which is another story. However, you can see little snippets of it, especially of the final few minutes. You can see it in our sinking level demo video which came out just after the real-time syncing to show some of the updates that have already gone into it. You can see it in a few other videos that we've licensed to third parties. There's a Reels documentary on the channel Reels. They have a documentary coming out I think oh, this month, April of 2018. And you'll be able to see quite a bit of that um, newer animation in it. One of the first things we did in changing this animation is we darkened it. Now, it was originally very dark to begin with, but we really lightened things so that like, the average viewer can look at it and see what's going on. If we made it as dark as the sinking of the Titanic really was, we would have people saying they can't see anything. Because the, the Titanic didn't have bright lights, it was the middle of the night, there was no moon. You can't see it. It's not like the movie where the ship's well lit. So one of the things that we did first was we dimmed down the lights to a more accurate level, and of course I didn't raise the brightness on the video, which is what I did when I released it. Yeah, we also added people. Now they're, they're very rough, rigid, silhouette type people that are, they're wearing a life jacket, but they're, they're just silhouettes otherwise, and they're very stiff, they don't animate, they don't move, or, they move, but they don't have like walking animations in them. Uh, but they are grouped together properly. They are positioned approximately where we knew clumps of people were, and we did put some other stragglers in there, and we counted it off so that the number of people on the deck is approximately what can educationally be guessed as to how many were on the deck at the time. So what you're seeing in the crowd, especially during that sinking demonstration video, you're actually seeing a very accurate representation of how crowded Titanic's decks would have been and where they would have been crowded. We also fixed the water and updated the sky so there's better stars up there. Okay. We know all the flack that Neil Tyson gave to James Cameron. There will be accurate stars. <laughs> One of the other things that was missing from the original video because of how rushed we were were ropes. You know, there's there's no lifeboat falls, so it looks like the lifeboats are just hovering down. That's just the best we could do at the time. There's no mast stays or funnel stays, there's no rigging, and it's it's kind of kind of bare looking. So we've added that, and we've added proper ropes and cable physics to these ropes and cables. And it really makes it look very flushed out, seeing the lifeboats go down, hanging from ropes, and seeing the stays on the funnels and watching them just collapse when the funnel goes down. It really flushes the animation out and it looks significantly better now. One of the really interesting things that we've changed is the way that the lights behave during the breakup. Originally we just had the lights black out because that's what everyone was familiar with, that's how it's always depicted, and that's just what's been taken for granted by historians. However, we've been talking with Park Stevenson and Bill Sauter, who are our consultants, and we've been evaluating the evidence that says some of the lights stayed on after the breakup, which actually makes a lot of sense. 
the emergency dynamos run the emergency set of lights, and they're in the aft end of the ship. They would not have gone underwater by the time of the breakup. They would have lasted until probably about 30 seconds before the ship disappeared. There's so much credible testimony saying that the lights remained on after the breakup. And there's so many secondary bits of evidence, like the fact that people were able to see things on the deck as the ship was going down, it means there has to be lights of some sort, at least. Not all of the lights, but a few emergency lights here and there, and we've had them remain on while the main set of lights do black out. One of the biggest things that we've changed, however, is the way the ship lists and pivots and, of course, breaks apart. It's one of the most noticeable, most obvious features of the sinking. And we have to get that right, because that's how the ship moves. That's how the level is going to behave in our game. So we've been updating that constantly, we've been changing things, we've been fixing things, and we've been really researching it. And we actually have a series of very in-depth tests that we plan to do over the coming months with our historians, and we actually are really excited to bring you along with them. I think you guys are going to be excited by them. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking, well, when do you guys get to see the final animation? When will we upload it? When will we share it? Um, but you guys are actually going to experience it. You guys are going to see it in the game. That's the final animation. It's just going to keep changing, going back and forth. It's a very fluid animation until the game is published. Then you guys are going to actually get to experience the final animation of the sinking firsthand on your computers in real time. Maybe even in VR if you guys have the VR setups. It will be the most accurate demonstration of the sinking of the Titanic that we can bring you with top historians advising us. You guys know who the historians are. They're on our website. You've heard from them in the past. You've seen them. You guys know how credible these guys are. I'm thoroughly looking forward to having all of our advisors come together into one room and we all sit down with all of the results of the tests that I mentioned. And we sit there with Kyle on the animation and a big screen and we're adjusting the animation live with the advisors there going over the data and just picking out every second of how the ship should be. I'm really looking forward to that day. Actually, it's going to be a full weekend. That's when we're going to get this right. In the meantime, keep an eye out for glimpses. We're going to sneak them into a couple videos. You saw them in this video, but we're going to put them in a few other videos too. Be sure to look us up on Facebook at Titanic Honor and Glory, or go to our newly designed website, titanichg.com, and also don't forget to like and subscribe.